Hello, beauties and gentle beauties. It is I, that guy who is not the other three Brain Scratch members, Lewis. Uh, one true nobody, Solaris Paradox, whatever you know me as. This is the Undertale stream. Now, before I begin, I actually do want to share a bit of trivia with this uh, slightly condescending looking um, please behave in the chat screen. I actually got the idea for this from uh, something that Toby Fox did on his Tumblr when there was some drama involving sh the monster Shiren and um, something that was apparently stereotypical about her. He actually did an in-character post on his Tumblr page uh, as Sans and... I suggest you go search that out because it is pretty entertaining to read and has some quotes within that, if taken out of context, would sound like profound nuggets of wisdom. But I have two guest stars with me here today. First, you all know Nathan. Say hi, Nathan. Hey, everybody. And second, uh, my girlfriend, Rebecca, who whose voice you might recognize from the Smash tournament, and who you definitely recognize if something that we had also done at Too Many Games had gone live by now, which it hasn't, but look forward to that in, like, the coming days. Say hi, Becca. Hi. Hi, Becca. Anyway, before I begin this game, um, I have a request. No backseat gaming in the chat, please. And as an extension of that, no spoilers for people who may not have necessarily played through a specific run of the game yet. Um, I'm going to be doing a neutral playthrough, and I'm going to be doing a pacifist playthrough, and I have plans for how I am going to be playing this game. So, in, um, in other words, I know pretty much what I'm showing and when I'm showing it, so if I skip something, it was probably on purpose. With that said, starting the game now... Now, I promised mods and I promised ketchup. As you can see, there is ketchup on the bottom of the screen. I'm going to turn down the game audio just a tiny little bit. There we go. There is ketchup on the bottom of the screen. Frisk down there, he is, um, she, it, is ogling it. And, um, it's very delicious looking ketchup, but I also promised mods. And I didn't just mean the mods in the chat, uh, I meant, um mods in the game. For example, this music. If any of you have played Undertale, you're probably wondering where the piano came from. It's a fan remix. The, um, the music in Undertale is actually really easy to replace. It's all Og Vorbis files, so basically if you make an Og Vorbis file of anything and set it so that it'll loop properly without, like, a weird skip or distortion or anything, um, you can just stick it in under the correct file name and replace whatever music or sound effect you damn well please. In fact, I actually had to undo some of the changes this mod made. Like, for example, when Undyne spots you later on in the, in the game, uh, this mod originally had a Metal Gear Solid exclamation sound that, I, that just took me out of the experience, so I took it out. Um, and also the sound effects when uh, Metaton reveals his true form was changed to some movie clip. Uh, this needs a spotlight or something, and I took that out too. Uh, I don't necessarily like that. Anyway, yeah, I'm beginning this with a completely clean save file. Uh, farewell, Undertale.ini. Uh, I shall miss you in my half halfway progress neutral playthrough that I didn't have any intention of finishing anyway. Okay, I'm not going to miss it at all. Now, as I said on Twitter, which half of you probably didn't notice, um, I named my Undertale protagonist Jenny. And that is because I am a Genesis baby. And the Earthbound protagonist was Ness. And the Earthbound Beginnings protagonist was Ninten. So I am Jenny. So what system is Lucas supposed to be named after? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe some iteration of that mind orb from Cthulhu Saves the World. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Level 1. HP 20. We are equipped with a stick and a bandage. It was rather, you know, thoughtful of, of Frisk to, um, put a bandage on himself or herself or themself before falling down this hole. Um, or maybe they packed it. 
Or maybe they were wearing a bandage for some other injury before they fell. That's actually kind of disturbing and might slightly answer the question of why Frisk came here in the first place. Ah! You think too deeply about certain things in this game and it makes your head hurt. Howdy! I'm Flowey. Flowey the Flower. Hmm. You're new to the underground, aren't ya? And yeah, I'm blatantly copying the Game Grumps Flowey voice. I can't hear anything else when I think of Flowey now. Golly, you must be so confused. Somebody ought to teach you how things work around here. I guess little old me will have to do. Ready? Here we go! I don't trust it. I'm a heart in a box, help! I'm trapped in a box! <laughs> See that heart? That is your soul, the very culmination of your being. Your soul starts off weak, but can grow strong if you gain lots of LV. What's LV stand for? Why, love, of course! You want some love, don't you? I don't know about that. I'm a child. Don't worry, I'll share some with you. That was slightly creepy. Down here, love is shared through little white friendliness pellets. Friendliness pellets? Oh boy, that's my favorite snack. Are you ready? Move around, get as many as you can. Ow. You idiot. <laughs> In this world, it's kill or be killed. Why would anyone pass up an opportunity like this? I have no idea why I'm making Flowey sound Southern. Um, okay. Sure Who knows? He, he could speak with a German accent for all we know. <laughs> yeah. That is true. <laughs> or he could actually be speaking in beeps. We don't know. <laughs> Die! Flowey is also like the only character in the game with any kind of voice clip. The fire saved me, and a goat woman came out of nowhere for some reason. Hmm. Goat mom! I can't imagine the two events are connected at all. <laughs> what a terrible creature, torturing such a poor, innocent youth. And now you're imitating Markiplier. Am I? Yeah. Hmm. I thought Metaton was imitating Markiplier. Never mind. Ah, do not be afraid, my child. I am Toriel, caretaker of the ruins. I pass through this place every day to see if anyone has fallen down. You were the first human to come here in a long time. Come, I will guide you through the catacombs. Uh, I don't know about catacombs, this place is pretty linear. <laughs> this way. Does Toriel actually have, like, color to her eyes? And that's uh, the second mod that I've added to the game. She has color in both her um, battle sprite and her uh, dialogue portrait. Ooh. The shadow of the ruins looms above, filling you with determination. HP fully restored. Yeah, save point to do that in this game. <laughs> that's sort of an on-again, off-again tradition with modern RPGs. Some of them do it and some of them don't. Welcome to your new home, innocent one. Allow me to educate you in the operation of the ruins. I learned how to step on pressure plates. That was educational. Although normally in dungeons that's a bad thing. The yeah, ruins are full of puzzles. Ancient fusions between diversions and door keys. One must solve them to move from room to room. Please adjust yourself to the sight of them. I like how she says that like it's some unsightly stain on the wall. Okay. Well, there is an actual solution to the puzzle. Only the fearless may proceed. Brave ones, foolish ones. Both walk not the middle path. M middle road, whatever. I misread that. So, I said during uh, Johnny's run for Fun the Computer Room that this was kind of symbolic for the entire game. Because, like, the middle path is the neutral run, which we are doing now. Brave ones would be pacifist run. Foolish ones would be genocide run. You see? That's Ooh. about as subtle as a battering ram to the schnoz. I didn't think of it like that. <laughs> to make progress here, you will need to trigger several switches. Do not worry. I have labeled the ones that you need to flip. In hard mode, 
uh, the joke card mode that is the uh, labels wear away so you have to figure it out on your own except she tells you anyway <laughs> press Z to read signs you see that's a joke because if you're playing on a keyboard you already did that and if you're playing on a gamepad like I am the sign is utterly useless <laughs> Stay on the path. That's the solution to this puzzle, but Toriel marked the signs. But by stay on the path, they mean the lighter pink ground. So, yeah. Now, I'm gonna be a rebel. No, no, no. You want to press the other switch. I even labeled it for you. But I want to see what this one does. Nah, she just says the same thing every time. It's, it's actually one of those cases where when you do the, the same incorrect thing over and over, you expect there to be multiple dialogue, which this game does a lot. I don't know why they didn't do anything here, though. Ah, well. Splendid! I am proud of you, little one. Let us move to the next room. Now, if you haven't figured it out, or didn't know it already, Toriel's name is a play on the world Tutorial, which is why she's giving us tutorials. Really hand-holdy tutorials, might I say. Oh, I skipped dialogue without reading it. Oops! You will need to be prepared for this situation. However, worry not. The process is simple. When you encounter a monster, you will enter a fight. While you are in a fight, strike up a friendly conversation. Stall for time. I will come to resolve the conflict. Practice talking to the dummy. Imagine if she came to help you during every fight. But it's a dummy. I mean, Goat Mom, how am I supposed to talk to a dummy? Why would I talk to a dummy? You walk in front of it and press A. That's how you talk to people, right? Do you need some ideas for conversation topics? Well, I often start with a simple, how do you do? You could ask them about their favorite books. Jokes can be useful for breaking the ice. Listen to this one. What did the skeleton tile his roof with? Shingles! Well, I thought it was amusing. Foreshadowing. <laughs> I talked to the dummy and it started a battle with me. <laughs> Talk to it again. A cotton heart and a button eye. You are the apple of my eye. <laughs> I need an adult. Okay. Um. How about that local sports team? <laughs> Doesn't seem much for conversation. Toriel seems happy with you, though. Ah, very good. You are very good. Was that sarcasm, Goat Mom? Goat Mom! <laughs> there is another puzzle in this room. I wonder if you can solve it. Now again, there is actually a solution to the puzzle, but this is the one puzzle that you don't even have to... You don't even need Toriel to solve it for you. <laughs> ah! Frog, it's attacking me! Ah! 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 <laughs> and you just run away. <laughs> You can kill that specific froggit, uh, by the way, and it will actually give you a full level up and will always die in one hit. So that is the fastest level up in the game. Uh, the rest of the normal froggits, I don't think, give you nearly as much experience. Uh, XP, I'm sorry. The western room is the eastern room's blueprint. Yeah, the light pink floor on the ground is the pathway through these very deadly looking spikes. However, the deadly looking spikes can't actually hurt you. This is the puzzle, but... Here, take my hand for a moment. Great, we got some literal hand-holding going on here. That's classy. <laughs> I, I realize that's the joke, viewers. Don't worry. It is adorable, though. It's, it's, it's adorable enough that you might not necessarily think of the pun it's trying to make. The, <laughs> the visual uh, pun. Although, uh, although the thing is that a, a lot of people who play this game blind uh, tend to think that Toriel, um, you know, is like uh, some psychopath that murders children. <laughs> like, I'm, like it, that, that's what people legitimately believe until you battle her. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, you're not supposed to know what's up. You're supposed to distrust everything. I mean, the first thing you see is a cute little flower, and it tries to kill you. <laughs> Puzzles seem a little too dangerous for now. But it's not it, dangerous. It try, physically can't hurt you. You try... I, I am slamming my face into these spikes. They are made of rubber. You have done excellently thus far, my child. However... I have a difficult request to ask of you. <laughs> I would like you to walk to the end of the room by yourself. There's hilarious fan art of this moment. <laughs> Forgive me for this. <laughs> this music is even funnier when it's orchestrated. It sounds so trumpety and epic. As Nathan uh, pointed out, I think it was you that pointed it out in John's stream in Fun the Charity Room. Um, it, the, the, the name of the track is Unnecessary Tension. I believe so, yeah. And yeah, uh, for the chat's benefit, froggets are naturally white. They are, um, they are colored white when you see their field sprite, which we will in the next room. Greetings, my child. Do not worry. I did not leave you. I was merely behind this pillar the whole time. Thank you for trusting me. Who said I trusted you? However, there was an important reason for this exercise. To test your independence. Great, I got to play Final Fantasy XIII for 30 seconds. <laughs> I must attend to some business and you must stay alone for a while. Please remain here. It's dangerous to explore by yourself. Take this. I'm sorry. I have an idea. I will give you a cell phone. If you have a need for anything, just call. Be good, all right? Great. A cell phone. <clears throat> Got a range of options here. How is there a cell phone signal underground? Uh, magic. Yeah. Just magic. Ma ma magic cell phone. <laughs> well, all of the electricity is, tech it, like, according to the game, magic. So, yeah. Magical electricity and whatnot. <laughs> huh? Oh! <laughs> How adorable! I could pinch your cheek! You can certainly find better than an old woman like me. I love how you can flirt with her. It's and then so you, and then you, it, No, what's more hilarious is if you call her mom first and then flirt with her. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to try that on the next playthrough. <laughs> Alright, well, that's the that's the end of the uh, tutorial, the, the beginning of the tutorial's long-ass dialogue sequence. Hello, this is Toriel. I just called you! You have not left the room, have you? There are a few puzzles ahead that I have yet to explain. It would be dangerous to try to solve them yourself. Be good, alright? Okay. And yeah, the reason the color mod does not affect the froggets is because they are white, as you can see here. They are white frogs. <sighs> well, you can see the color mod really did wonders for Whims, and his wings are slightly bluer. <laughs> wow <laughs> Whims and approach meekly Okay, now my rule for this particular neutral playthrough Is going to be If I can spare or run away on my first turn I will do so But if I fail to run and or cannot spare On the first turn Then I will fight to the death So we'll see how many XP's We get by doing that Halfway through your you first monster. word Whimson bursts into tears and runs away. But I was trying to help. He looked so sad. <laughs> ribbit, ribbit. Excuse me, human. I have some advice for you about battling monsters. If you act a certain way or fight until you almost defeat them, they might not want to battle you anymore. If a monster does not want to fight you, please use some mercy, human. Ribbit. Now, the interesting thing about about the, this beginning tutorial is that you can actually kill your tutorials before you get to them. Case in point, this froggit is the one we could have killed a few minutes ago, so it wouldn't be here if you attacked it. It says, take one. 
Take a piece of candy? Sure. Why not? You know what? I'm gonna take another. How dare you? It said you, only one! You took more candy. How disgusting. <laughs> You're a monster! <laughs> take a candy? Yeah. You take another piece. You feel like the scum of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> I like how it says that even in the genocide run. <laughs> oh yeah! Uh, genocide Chara will totally kill your ass, but now taking too much candy makes her heart her ache. His heartache. You know, I really need to get used to saying they. <laughs> well, I always say her with regard to the Undertale protag because I deliberately named myself a girl's name. But, um, yeah. Uh, the majority of the fan base does see Frisk and Kara as girls anyway. Uh, j it, just based off of fan art. It's weird. Stuff. It's weirdly like an inkblot test. Like, I've seen people default to calling Frisk slash Chara a boy, and I've seen them default to calling them a girl. And, and I've also noticed that ma the majority of the people who cosplay as Frisk or Kara uh, are typically, well, female. Just, just something I've noticed. Play. I, I Playfully uh, crinkling through the leaves fills you with determination. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I think I think the whole thing with the gender thing with uh, Frisk and Chara goes to normally with Frisk uh, the the purple uh, the blue and pink uh, the color of Frisk's shirt is normally seen as an effeminate color combo. So I think that's why a lot of people will relate Frisk more towards a girl. Well, here, um, here's the thing. Frisk's shirt is blue and pink at the same time. Yeah, it, it's, but but most people don't, most people don't see blue and pink together unless it's on a girl. Granted, you know, blue is a boy's color and pink is normally seen as a girl's color. Um, mm -hmm. hello, this is Toriel. For no reason in particular, which do you prefer? Get used to her interrupting us like this. I, I I am more of a butterscotch person. Yes. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. You were saying, we are Nathan? Simply meant to be. Um, but yeah, no, it's. I I think it also comes down using using whatever gender pronoun you're comfortable with is is okay. It, whether you want to use he, she, or they, because I mean, Lewis, you you named for us, you named the protagonist Jenny. Yep. So I mean, I've never seen a dude named Jenny. Mm. <laughs> I've 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 met a boy named Sue, but not a dude named Jenny. Yes, Toriel. Hello, this is Toriel. Wow, of all the one people who have my number, <laughs> I would never have guessed it would be you. <laughs> you do not dislike cinnamon, do you? I know what your preference is, but would you turn up your nose if you found it on your plate? Right, right, uh, I understand. You Thank don't even you. have a choice to answer here. <laughs> Thank you for being patient, by the way. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Toriel. <laughs> John, John's uncle in the chat just said something that was so not appropriate. He said some people uh, see her shirt as blue and black, but I see it. As, some see it as white and gold. <laughs> uh, oh no! <laughs> three out of four gray rocks recommend you push them. Okay. <laughs> ah, frog monster. Wow, I'm getting lucky with my escapes. At this rate, I'm gonna I'm still gonna end up being on a pacifist route by the time I get to Toriel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but you're not gonna have any gold. <laughs> hmm. Uh, on my first playthrough of the game, I went with the butterscotch op option too, mainly because in real life, uh, cinnamon has no flavor to me because it's an aromatic uh, flavor. If yeah. you don't have if you don't have a sense of smell, you can't taste cinnamon. Didn't you read the sign downstairs? No, I didn't. Let's go check. <laughs> ah! That was a mean trick. <laughs> a pair of frogs hopped towards you. Oops. Uh, didn't didn't mean to do that, but that was my first turn, so I guess I'm gonna have to fight these two. Um, actually meant to go flee. But uh, I got a little trigger happy there. Oh, I started ma I started massing the X button. Ah! Wait, wait for being frogs they meow. What? <laughs> <laughs> they're not frogs. They're frogets. 
Yeah, but what part of frog it implies cat? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And Lewis, yeah. if we get a cat, let's name it Froggit. <laughs> <laughs> Froggits are super easy to dodge. Anyway, yeah, the attacking system in this game is timing-based. Sort of like a rhythm game, I suppose. Um, with Some weapons only have one line that you need to time, but later weapons in the game will have multiple lines. Then there's a, a punching game where you have to mash the button once you hit it. You are intimidated by Froggit's raw strength. Only kidding. Okay, 6 XP and 4 gold. And that wasn't enough to level up. That was 2 froggets and I didn't level up. Kill yeah. more stuff! Kill more <laughs> stuff! Please don't <laughs> step on the leaves. <laughs> so yeah, the puzzle above, you need, to, you need to step on the broken floor bits that correspond to, to the uh, path that is not covered in leaves. But there is one patch of leaves you can step on and it is the one in front of the sign up here. I walked to that sign to show off that I do, in fact, have this puzzle completely fucking memorized. Flee! A little heart's running away. Okay, up, up, up. 